Well, my family Christmas tradition tends to consist of getting Chinese food and going to the movies. But obviously, things are a little bit different this year. We will not be going out to a theater, but we will have to choose what to watch on a streaming service. We're joined now by Gitesh Pandya. He is the box office guru, founder, and editor. Gitesh, thank you for being here. And obviously, things have changed in terms of how companies are coming out with their movies now, how studios are coming out. Um, and I, I think the biggest marker of this change might be Wonder Woman being out on HBO Max, um, streaming simultaneously with what is going on in the theaters. Um, the people you're talking to in the industry, I mean, how, how big of a change is this? How long lasting of a change do they think it will be? Well, it's a bit of a panic that's been going across the industry as far as Will this be a game changer? Will other studios follow? I think it's very experimental. I think it's a bold move that Warner Brothers made. Now, obviously, movie theaters have been closed for a long time. This year, you know, normally the box office would be in the $10, $11 billion range. A year ago, it was $11.4 billion for 2019. This year, for 2020, we're one week away from finishing. I'm projecting $2.3 billion for 2020. That's an 80% plunge. That's 80% of the box office wiped out this year because theaters are closed and it's not going to change too much in the first quarter of next year. So much of 2021, a lot of theaters closed, slowly reopening, Warner Brothers hedging their bets and saying, listen, we're going to open these movies in theaters where they are allowed, but also on HBO Max in the United States for a 30 day window uh, to drive subscribers. Um, and Wonder Woman 1984 is the first movie to try this sort of uh, new strategy. It's uh, this weekend. Um, I've had a chance to see it. It is a movie you want to see on the big screen. It's, it's a superhero film, but obviously, uh, you know, about a third or so of the theaters across the U.S. are not even open. So you'll see an audience of comic book fans seeing this at home on HBO Max this weekend. But uh, it does uh, uh, open the door for this whole holiday season for people to see movies like this at home on streaming. And then uh, the other studios so far have not been following suit, but we'll have to wait and see. Gitesh, let's stay on the movie theaters. Uh, what does the movie theater industry look like after the pandemic? It's incredibly challenging. And, and in my opinion, I think it's about the experience. That's where the theaters have to really push it. They need to offer a bigger and better experience in the theater that you cannot get at home. Because if one thing that we've seen in 2020, it's that the amount of streaming content has skyrocketed, not just B-list product, but A-list product. Uh, almost everything is coming at home uh, because of necessity. So that's a new challenge that theaters have next year. So when it comes to the seats, the food, the concessions, the drinks, uh, live entertainment or live talent uh, doing uh, interactive Q&As, things like that, anything that theaters can do to up the experience, to make it unique, exciting, uh, is going to help. Also, the premium formats, IMAX, 40X, uh, you know, that's something you can't get at home. So I do think that 2021 is going to be led by the bigger brands, the big action films, the movies that really take advantage of the big screen experience. Uh, and over the next two years or so, we'll start seeing some of the smaller films uh, get back as well. But it's going to be the experience, and these theaters have to up their game to get the bodies back into those seats. Gitesh, for the movies that are being released streaming, either streaming only or simultaneously in the theaters, um, how do we measure those? Because traditionally, you would get box office receipts from the theater companies. You could also do some on-the-ground research. Now, do we just have to rely on the studios or the streaming companies to give us the numbers? Well, right. For streaming, it's a new methodology. It's called crossing your fingers. You have to hope that these companies uh, release numbers. Usually, they'll release them on an earnings call at some point where it benefits them, not on any regular basis. And so uh, for some of these films, uh, there are a lot of streams, a lot of views that are happening, and they will boast them more from a PR perspective. And uh, as far as the media goes, as far as consumers, you know, we don't know exactly how much of a success each film is. Uh, the studios know themselves. Uh, they'll share what little that they can. But I think in the broader sense, Disney Plus, HBO Max, Netflix, Amazon, and so on, they are looking to drive subscribers. And you can do that by having more content, more unique, exclusive content. And that's why you're seeing some of these studios who are affiliated with a streaming service uh, push some of their titles to streaming only instead of a theatrical release. For example, uh, Disney 
Uh, they own Pixar. They have the movie Soul, which was supposed to come out last June in theaters. It got pushed, and now it's coming out on streaming tomorrow. It's a wonderful film. I, I recommend it. Uh, but it's not one of those sort of Toy Story franchise films which gets pushed until theaters are ready. It's going straight to streaming, and it helps uh, to make Disney Plus a, a nice value for consumers. And that's part of the point. You have the content uh, roll in along with TV shows and other sort of uh, uh, items to drive those subscribers. And, uh, you know, HBO Max's deal is one of them. Uh, but it's a crowded field, and you're going to see a lot of growth in all of these streaming services. Uh, trying to live side by side with a rebuilding of the theatrical box office in 2021. Right, Katesha, Disney has a, a ton of, of content coming out next year. As you analyze the, their slate of content set to come to market, what grade would you put on it? Oh, I'd say uh, I'd give it an A, A minus. I think they have some uh, terrific titles. 2019 was a banner year for Disney. I don't think we're going to see that again anytime soon they had avengers endgame lion king and so on so uh you know for 2021 they still do have major films from uh the marvel universe obviously 2020 was the first time in a long time at 12 years where no marvel films came out so those fans are hungry and waiting for black widow and more films to come out in 2021 but you also have pixar uh, and you also have the main uh, Disney animation studio coming out with films. They do have Raya and the Last Dragon, which is a new original film coming out in March. This one will have the same format as Mulan, meaning uh, it will have a Disney premiere access for $30 uh, option for people who want that. The difference is Mulan did not play in U.S. theaters. Uh, Raya will open in U.S. theaters. They're hoping that uh, a, a certain number of theaters will be uh, open and ready to go for those who choose to see it that way. So it'll be a little bit of a hybrid model. But, uh, you know, they have a lot of content in all four quarters. And, uh, you know, a lot of the industry will be looking to Disney to sort of lead the way in this charge to come back. Gitesh, really quickly, of the movies that are coming out on Christmas, what's your top recommendation? Oh, well, you know, I would say Pixar's Soul is probably the top one. It, it's a, one of those meaning of life kind of films, good for all ages, makes you think. Uh, and I plan to see it again. It's a good one. That's definitely news I can use in my household. Thank you so much, Gitesh Pandya of Box Thanks. Office Guru. Appreciate it. We'll be